if it's one thing that I know we all like, that is a healthy immune system because nobody likes to be sick. I know I don't like to be sick and I'm sure you don't either. And so today I want to talk through some practical things that you can do to boost your immune system. So by the end of this, you'll know exactly what you need to do to make sure that you're on the right track with a healthy way to fight off viruses and make sure that you decrease allergies and autoimmune diseases and just making sure your body is healthy enough to fight off anything that comes its way. That is what our immune systems are designed to do. Now, before I continue, I want to say, can you please like this video and also subscribe to my page so that you'll get notifications every time I do a video that is the most valuable thing that you can do for me right now. So let's get into it. Now, our immune systems are sometimes compromised by certain things that we do in our lifestyle. And a lot of this can actually start way early on in life. And we can actually have a way to help to make sure that when we are young, that our immune systems are healthy. But of course, that's dependent on the choices that the parents make. And I'll give you some uh, tips to how to make sure that even starting as a baby, your child can make sure that he or she has a healthy immune system. But as for adults, a lot of times there's already been some damage to our immune system and our microbiome is a bit compromised. And when it's compromised, you'll start to see signs that something is going on with the immune system. First of all, if you have an autoimmune disease, that is letting you know that your immune system has been compromised, but don't worry because there are ways to reverse the symptoms of an autoimmune disease and to really kind of put it into remission. And so if you're not though dealing with an autoimmune disease, for example, you can have problems like uh, allergies or you're, you know, sick from bacterial or uh, viral infections. And I noticed that a lot of people who are having problems with their immune system, they get sick a lot, you know, and it can manifest itself in different ways. Uh, there may be skin allergies, for example, there may be cold sore breakouts, for example, there may be a, a lack of their body's ability to heal from even a wound or a sore. That's kind of saying that your body is not healthy enough to heal itself and its immune system could be compromised because of that. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't other reasons why your body won't heal. Like for certain diabetics, that's one of the symptoms is that their body cannot heal as best as it needs to heal because of that. But somewhere in there, the immune system is often compromised. And then you have certain gut issues and digestive issues and leaky gut syndrome and all of these other things. That's a telltale sign that the immune system is going to be compromised. As a matter of fact, even if you don't have certain symptoms with the immune system, if you know you have gut issues, then you know that if something comes your way, this is going to be hazardous to you because your gut is pretty much equal or 80% the same as your immune system. And so they work together actually. And so if you having gut issues, then you want to be careful because yes, that is a warning sign that your immune system will not be functioning as properly as it needs to be functioning. And so you want to deal with some of these issues. Now, a lot of times there are certain things that we do in our life that can compromise this. Like for example, when we take antibiotics, this actually has a way in on our ability to allow our immune system to be well. It compromises it and you want to take some measures to make sure that you can reverse these issues that maybe antibiotics has caused you. Now, if you are on antibiotics currently, then it is necessary to do extra things to make sure that your gut is healthy and that you have the amount of healthy, good bacteria in your gut. And so taking uh, probiotics and eating fermented foods a little bit more when you're on antibiotics is good. Now be very careful because antibiotics will strip a lot of the good bacteria and the good microbiomes that's supposed to be inside of your gut. And so you want to just be careful that you're not taking it 
for a reason that you don't need to be taking it for. And a lot of times when you have an infection and you go to the doctor, they automatically put you on antibiotics, but antibiotics cannot fix a viral infection. It's only supposed to be given for bacterial infections. And sometimes doctors will make the mistake and giving you an antibiotic for something that it can't even heal and it's gonna ruin your gut. I know a lot of people who wind up taking antibiotics and then all of a sudden they start getting major gut issues and after the antibiotics are done, now they're dealing with months and months of something going on with their digestive system that they can't seem to help or get rid of. So be very careful of that. And then also if you've taken steroids, that can compromise your gut and your immune system. And also birth control pills. If you've taken birth control pills, this will also give you a great disadvantage with your gut and your immune system. And so these are certain things that starts to really weigh on the immune system. And then also just remember too, that as you get older, your immune system starts to weaken a little bit. And so you wanna take into consideration your age when it comes to your immune system. The older you are, the more careful you have to be with being very intentional and making sure that your immune system is healthy. And this is very important because people who have healthy immune systems, you hear them say, I don't get colds, I don't get allergies, I don't get viral infections or symptoms of them because my cells and my, my po the power of my immune system kicks in and fights all of that stuff off before I even know that there's something bad going on. And the truth is, if you can get rid of the symptoms, you don't really quite care about what it is that's happening. Yeah, like viral infections will pass from person to person, but the person who doesn't get the symptoms are the person who is less bothered by the whole uh, idea of having an infection in the first place. It's only when you start to have those symptoms that make you sick and make you feel weak and you just feel like crap and you don't even want to get out the bed to do anything because you're too sick to do so. Nobody wants to feel like that. It's the worst feeling in the world. And there are some things that you can definitely do about this to make sure that your body is very strong and you're able to fight off any type of problems that your body has to encounter. So one of the first things, as we've already kind of started to talk about, was making sure that you take care of the gut. And some good ways to take care of the gut is, I've said this before, making sure that you're eating fermented foods, probiotics, making sure you get enough foods with probiotics in your body and prebiotics. And a lot of times it's good to take a supplement, probiotic supplement, if you're not getting it in your foods. And then something as great as bone broth is so good for the gut. I mean, it has so many healing mechanisms. If you would start to include that and take that daily, you would start to see a difference right away. As a matter of fact, I'll share this with you. One of the things that I wanna talk about with helping your gut is fasting. You do need to have times where you give your digestive system a break. And one of the great ways that you can literally change your gut within like a few days is to maybe just go on a 24 hour fast. And when I say 24 hour, that's not a 72 hour. That's not fasting from Monday to Wednesday. That's fasting from 5 p.m. Monday to 5 p.m. Tuesday, okay? Just a 24 hour fast. And then when you break your fast, to break your fast with something like bone broth, wow. I'm talking about your gut will change. I'm telling you, it is amazing for you. And if you can start to, you know, do some of the other things that I'm going to mention, the rest of the days, you can see a turnaround very quickly. Now, I'm not saying that if you have some super complicated issues that there's not other things that you really need to do and you need to do them very, very, very consistently. But I'm just saying that that is one quick hack that you can do to kind of get your gut going and kickstart things a bit. Now, another thing that you can take is raw kefir. And so that's something that's really, really good to take uh, on an empty stomach to help your gut. Any type of raw dairy. A lot of people have even fixed their gut with raw milk because they're full of probiotics. I mean, very healthy. And I'm talking raw. Now that's hard to find because a lot of times you can't get it unless you go to a particular place and then you have to really pretty much say that it's for your cat because it's illegal because you know there's a lot of things in place that you know people in higher positions don't really want you to go straight to the farmer and get 
raw milk. And so they want to make it a bit complicated to get. But the truth is raw milk have fixed a lot of issues in people. And I know there's been a lot of talk about it being unhealthy and it needs to be pasteurized and all of this other stuff. But I'm telling you that there are a lot of testimonies and there's a lot of success stories about people who have cured a lot of gut issues and immune problems through drinking raw milk. And so again, uh, fermented foods like sauerkraut is really amazing and kimchi and just getting those fermented foods into your system is really, really good. Now I want to say something that really destroys the gut. And I know a lot of people have a problem with this particular substance, but I want to mention it because it's worthy of being mentioned because I do want to be honest about how it impacts your health. And we're talking about how alcohol can impact your gut. When you drink alcohol, it will strip and it will rob you from all of the the things that your gut needs to be healthy and it starts to destroy it on so many different levels. And so if you are drinking alcohol, I just want you to know that there is a risk that you are compromising your immune system and you're compromising your ability to have a healthy digestive system. And so if you are looking to boost your immune system and to get a healthy gut and to be able to fight off disease the way you need to, and to be able to prevent having these crazy symptoms that make you feel like you can't do anything at the moment, then I would highly suggest that you give up alcohol or decrease the alcohol intake. And if you have levels of dependent, please make sure that you seek out for some kind of professional help with that. Now, another thing I want to mention is certain things that can actually cause you to have digestive issues. And a lot of this is going to pertain to foods. Now, I do believe that if you want a healthy gut, it's probably encouraged to decrease your intake of carbs because most people have a little bit too much sugar in their diet. And I'm not saying this just for anybody, but most people are metabolically unhealthy. And so I tend to give the advice that's pushed in that direction. And I know that a lot of times people are doing way too many carbs, way too much sugar, way too many grains. And I know there's things out there that are, that are disturbing the gut and the digestive system for most people. And so one of the things I do want to say is that sometimes grains can have a huge effect on the digestive system. I know people who is, they're fine with it, but I do know that wheat and barley and gluten can really have a negative impact on a lot of people. And a lot of people are really gluten intolerant. They have some problems. And this isn't just with gluten. This is with a lot of different food items and most people are not paying attention. And sometimes there might be even good things that you eat that's affecting your digestive system and you don't even know it. Like people are trying to get more fiber, but then you got other people that have too much fiber. And so that fiber is messing up their digestive system or some people, certain plants and the oxalates that come from the plants are really messing up the digestive system. And so you'll have some people who wind up feeling horrible off of certain plants. They wind up with depression and, and immune problems and even autoimmune disease. And they wind up with breakouts and skin issues and all kinds of stuff, joint problems, back pain and low energy and they don't know where it's coming from but I want to remind you that you should always pay attention to how your belly, your tummy feels the moment you put something in it. It'll start to speak to you. It'll start to bloat up and you'll get gas and sometimes constipation and sometimes diarrhea and it'll start to, you know, make sounds and stuff that you know it, there's something wrong. Okay. So please pay attention to that because there are a lot of food items that your belly don't like when you bring them into your body. And so you need to pay attention to that. And you know, there are some standardized things for everybody, but that's where we start to section off because for some people, they cannot tolerate dairy. And for other people, they can tolerate dairy. So it makes a difference when you start to have some self-awareness to how you're actually feeling and paying attention to what happens with your stomach when you put something in your stomach, okay? So 
The last thing I got to point out, and this is, of course, very important to everybody, and that is too much sugar. Like we have too much sugar in our diet, and this comes from, you know, processed and refined foods and sugar that we put in our system and fast foods and just too much processed foods, period. We have to start to limit this because it's just too much sugar in the diet and this is going to have a huge impact on your immune system. Sugar is not good for you when there is an overabundance of the sugar in your body. And so you want to make sure that you're paying attention to how much sugar you put in your body. Now, one specific sugar that I'm going to mention that just is really bad for your body and that's fructose and i'm not talking about just the fructose that comes from fruit i'm talking about that added high fructose corn syrup that is being put in all this processed food all these snacks all the frozen food and the fast food and just all of this stuff that people don't even know you know i looked at a bottle of ketchup and it had high fructose corn syrup in it and i'm sure when people are squirting it all over their fries they don't even know that this stuff is probably in there because it's just ketchup it's just a condiment no big deal but there are so many different things that this fructose is in that is destroying your health and you want to be very aware of that and so fructose is really bad for your body it's bad for your gut it's bad for your liver your cells in your body do not metabolize the fructose it turns to fat and it causes a fatty liver and it's just not good it increases inflammation it puts you at risk for chronic disease and so you really want to watch the amount of fructose that you're putting in your system i'm telling you if you need a healthy digestive system and you need a healthy immune system putting fructose in your body is not the best way to do this and so if you start to implement some of these practical things like intermittent fasting and watching how much uh, wheat and grain and gluten and dairy that you're putting in your system if it is bothering you i will put that condition in there that gluten is not good for a lot of people and a lot of people don't even know they're intolerant to it because they're not really paying attention to the response of their gut all right and so I just want you to know that it's not normal to always be sick and always be coughing and always have allergies and you know when flu season come always the flu season and always this season and always allergy season and oh i have a skin flare up that's not normal even if you're used to it that's your norm but it is not the norm that you're supposed to have and i want to bring you back to a very healthy baseline in comparison to what is healthy. There are plenty of people that just really don't get sick. I know people who say, I haven't gotten sick in like five, 10 years. And even when they do feel their body getting sick, it's a onset. They kind of, they're so self-aware, such as myself. I'm very aware when I feel like my body is about to be fighting some type of viral infection or bacterial infection, I can feel the onset of it even before the symptoms actually take root. And I can tell my body is starting to fight off things. And a lot of times the symptoms never even come. And so, but I feel it in the area of my energy. And you have to be really, really aware of your body to know when your energy is compromised, not just from a lack of sleep, but because your body is kicking in to uh, making sure that the defense mechanisms are there to fight off and to throw off certain viruses that may have, or certain infections, I'll say in general, uh, that may have tried to attack your body. And so again, there are a lot of people who don't often get sick, don't have breakouts, don't have a lot of problems going on. And then you have all these other people where it's always something going on. You always sick. You always got an infection. You always got these symptoms. You always got an outbreak. You got, you got cold sores. You got all of these things and no, um, it's, it's okay if you having these problems, but it's just letting you know that there's something about your body and your immune system that's too weak to be able to um, counteract what is going on. And I want to encourage you by saying that you can put your body into a predicament where you can counteract and you can have less of these occurrences that are happening to your body that's attacking you. And by just taking these steps, like I say, with the fasting and with watching what you eat and with making sure that you put in your system fermented foods like bone broth 
and making sure that you are lowering your carb intake and your sugar intake and eating a clean diet and making sure that you're eating foods that are anti-inflammatory, you know, like ginger, for example, and eating if your body can tolerate it, those bitter vegetables, green leafy vegetables, dandelions, you know, and parsley and, you know, all of these amazing food items that can really help to empower your body. Okay. So I wanted to point these things out because the truth is you don't have to be sick and you don't have to have all these symptoms all the time. And I know a lot of people who used to be sick a lot and now they're not. I even know people that have autoimmune diseases that have no trace of it, no symptoms of it. It's in remission. Their problems have gone away. Um, the outbreaks that they were having has, has gone away and their body has been able to reverse itself. You know, don't be discouraged if this is you just know that there are things that you can do to your body. And one of the best things you can do to make sure that your immune system is healthy is to take care of your digestive system of your gut and treat it very well and put great things in your body that can empower you. And the last thing I want to say is making sure that you have the right amount of acid in your stomach is very, very important. Some people's stomach is actually too alkaline and your stomach should not be alkaline. Your stomach should be acidic. And a lot of people don't know that. So making sure like that you include other things in your diet, like lemon, putting lemon in your water can help your digestive system altogether. But these certain food items are there to even balance out your pH balance, making sure that the certain parts of your body that should be more acidic is acidic and it's not too alkaline and vice versa. All right. So let's make sure that you continue to feel energized and great. And remember again to like this video and make sure you subscribe to my page because I will continue to get videos out to you that help you to reverse some of these health issues and to make sure that you set a framework and a path and a process that can make you live your highest quality self. And in order to do that, you got to make sure your body is healthy. Okay. So thanks again for listening and I'll see you next time.